Hey everybody, welcome to this end top live. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, today we're going to be talking about injection molds and specifically about the cooling of injection molds. Now, typically, and you can see here I have a CAD model of this injection mold here. Typically with injection molds, uh, the cooling channels are, are rather basic. And let me do a section cut here and show you what I mean. We can go ahead and see we have some pretty basic section or some <laughs> sections, some pretty basic cooling channels inside of here. Now these work fine, but you have to have a lot of them and they're, they're a little bit outdated in today's society. And one thing we really want to be able to do, and one thing we can do with additive manufacturing and with NTOP specifically is create better cooling channels, whether it's conformal or just better performance in general, right? We can use NTOP to create some really great cooling channels to potentially do a couple of things to our molding operations, right? One, with better cooling channels comes better control of the temperature of our mold, and therefore we could potentially increase the cycle times of our molding. So we can potentially get more parts per minute, parts per hour, whatever it is, and therefore, you know, more money in the bank. Uh, but also with better cooling means we can remove some extra mass, right? Any excess mass on the bottom of this part, we can actually potentially remove some of that and make these molds a little bit easier to deal with and a little bit easier to handle for our machine operators, right? And they're very bulky and very hard to, to, to handle. So anything we can remove from there, uh, one, mold is less expensive, two, easier to handle. So how can we do that? Well, let's focus in on this bottom half here because everything I do to the bottom half applies to the top half. Uh, and what I'm going to do is actually do a little bit of CAD prep. So you notice on my initial one, I have these four inlet holes. And what I'm going to be doing is actually creating this, this what I'm calling my AM hex mold, my heat exchanger mold. And I have this one channel running through the mold. It's just one inlet, one outlet, but it's doing uh, a couple of things for me. So let's take a look at the path here. We have this nice path that's running all the way down the length, circles back, and then out through the other side as well. And you'll notice I'm designing this elliptical here, this elliptical channel. And this could be any shape you want. I'm showing off this elliptical shape. It's not a circle. You could do diamond. You could do teardrop. It could be any shape you want. Everything here uh, would be done the same way. But not only did I bring in this elliptical channel, I also created this as a rectangular channel, right? Because, well, in CAD, this would take an extra 10 seconds of effort to do. But I need a little bit of data from this rectangular channel to, to make what I'm going to do easier. Now, inside of this channel, I don't just want to create this elliptical channel. Uh, that's going to present some problems here, right? We'd have some overhangs that are unprintable, but, but also just making an elliptical channel is, is not really going to help me any. What I'm going to do is take these, let me find here, take these fins, and I'm going to be orienting these fins conformally to the flow path of my channel now. So we need a little bit of data from this these rectangular channel that I brought in here. So what I'm going to do is create some points for this fin. You notice I brought this fin in as some very basic CAD data as well. And I need to create some destinations for this plane, right? Where are we putting this simple fin? So what I'm going to do is make use of NTOP's lattice capabilities. And I'm going to create a conformal lattice from CAD face. So I'm going to select this top CAD face, which is my cooling path. I'm going to create a lattice structure with zero offset, meaning it, it's directly on the surface in this case. So if I toggle it on, we don't see anything. But I'm not actually interested in the lattice itself. I'm interested in the vertices. So I'm actually here to create these vertices. And you notice they're in a very specific pattern so that one after the other is not intersecting each other or you know hitting each other right away. So we're going to make use of this here. And I actually go ahead and filter out these points because a couple of them go ahead and stick outside of my mold a little bit because I made my channel a little extra long. Now, I just filter those out in a super, super simple, easy operation with one of our standard uh, toolkit blocks inside of here. You can see now we're back to the inside. And then I do a little bit of math. And this math, you know, when I open this up, might be a little bit interesting and a little bit scary at some points. But essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking the faces, the inside and outside faces of this rectangular channel that I went ahead and brought in, the inside and outside. And I'm going to be using the normal direction and a little bit of cross uh, product math to orient these new fins in that flow path orientation, right? So what I'm doing is creating a bunch of planes, a bunch of planes which whose axis I'm defining based upon these, these faces here. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking 
uh, this inside face. And I'm saying, okay, my y axis, I want to be in the normal direction, right? Completely normal to this plane. Or, sorry, to this face. But the x axis, I don't want it to be normal. I actually want to take the cross product of that with another vector, obviously, here that gives me not the normal, but more along the lines of a tangential direction so that I'm properly orienting these. And at the end of this math, and it's not not too hard, uh, too crazy, you'll be able to you know, dissect it if you download the, the file here, I get these oriented planes, which you know, I'll be are a little bit hard to, to look at here with all of them at the same time. But if we take a little bit of a closer look, you'll notice as we get to those curves here, and if I turn on this elliptical channel here, you'll notice I am orienting these, these fins now along the direction of my channel. And that is my end goal. So now that I have all of this being oriented and I have these destination planes, I select a, a source plane here, which is matching up with my fin. And I go ahead and orient these fins along my direction that I just created. So now as I'm going in and up, it's going straight away. As I come to that curve, I'll go ahead and show off the channel again. As I come to this curve, we're curving with my channel. Again, we're going back to the straight, our secondary curve, and then over here to the exit, right? So now we have these fins oriented in our flow channel. And the reason I, I did this, what, you know, we could have done this a couple of different ways, maybe just columns or, or something else, but these fins, these fins are going to do several things for us. So let me go ahead and show it here in context of our mold. Once we put it inside of there, do a couple basic Boolean operations, well, we get this very nice looking mold with our new what I'm going to call heat exchanging channel here. And these fins, they're going to do several things for me. One, they're going to act like heat exchanger fins, right? Like fins on a heat exchanger. So there's going to be heat from my mold running through them. And then the water or fluid of our choice that we're running through here is going to be removing heat from those fins. Two, these fins are going to act as support structures for my printing process, right? So now that I have this elliptical channel, which has overhangs that are by themselves not printable, these fins are going to actually help me with that and make sure that this is uh, entirely printable, right? So they're doing two things for me, but also they're structural, right? So this, these molds, they get clamped together pretty hardcore, and these fins are going to add in a little extra rigidity. So they're actually uh, having a structural effect as well, right? And just like anything, if I wanted to, I could change up the spacing or the sizing or even the blend radius that I applied between them, I could change all of this up from a thermal simulation, a structural simulation, maybe some combination of both if I want to optimize for two things at once. But I didn't do that in this file. I'm just showing you off the technology or you know the process to create these fins. And then you can take it and riff on it from here, right? Use it as a template in that case. So now that we have the, these fins and, and these this wonderful pattern, you'll notice I want to come back to this point. These fins, one after the other, they're not directly aligned, right? They're offset a little bit. And that's from that lattice structure that I chose. Now I did that uh, for, for a couple reasons. You know, when the fluid comes, it's going to add in a little bit of that tortuous path, right? Help create uh, enough or a high enough Reynolds number, right? Enough of that. But also it's not going to cause us a massive pressure drop uh, in this case, but it's going to help it still stay nice and turbulent, right? So there's a couple parameters about these that we could certainly fine tune. Uh, but the idea here is to you know increase our heat exchanging capabilities without you know decreasing our pressure massively thus rendering it pretty much ineffective right so you know the next thing we would certainly do is take this mesh it send it over to discovery live maybe fluent whatever fluid flow you need check that it's meeting all your your design needs right any low pressures or or any really poor circulation areas you can certainly come back change up your parameters and tops automatic and not automatic, but reusable workflows are going to go ahead and fix that up for you, give you your new design. You can revalidate, resimulate, and that's the power of NTOP here. But once we zero in on that, right? So now we have our cooling channel meeting, meeting all of our needs. Let's circle back to what I said at the beginning. We could not just make this cool better. We can potentially remove some extra mass from it at the end of it. So we have this material here or this, this mold. But at the bottom here, we have some extra material. And I don't just want to chop off the bottom here and say, OK, good to go. I want to make sure it stays strong enough. So what I'll actually do is I'm going to create a little bit of an isogrid here at the bottom. I'm going to section out a part of my bottom of my mold that I want to infill with this new isogrid. So now I'm removing this mass from here, some extra material. 
but it's still going to be nice and strong because I'm using this isogrid. So I'm removing some extra mass. So now it's not as you know annoying or difficult to move around for our machine operators. It's a little bit lighter. Therefore, it's a little bit cheaper to, to print, right? Uh, but it's still strong enough and we have better control over our heat. So this idea of this, you know, improved cooling mold gives us better cycle times. It reduces the mass of our molds. It has a lot of potential benefits and the ability to take these, these fins that we're creating and orient them conformally to the direction of our flow. There's a lot of awesome things happening inside of this mold. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Of course, any questions, please leave them below or you know reach out to me and ask me those questions happy to answer them but i think this is a really fantastic example showing off some fantastic capabilities of ntop in, in the world of heat exchangers uh and in the world of, of light weighting but also in the application area of molds thank you guys have a wonderful day